Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Valigar Alavane. Alright, so we just finished up part 2 of Delirious, and now we're going to be heading on to part 3. Um, so once you complete and step out, you just need to run down, obviously follow the arrow on our mini-map here, and talk to Colum again. And once you talk to him, he just bestows the next part for you. things here all right and then you want to head into the tomb on the far right now again um, when they went back and re rechanged everything uh, they also increased the level of this quest this quest used to be a level six on normal making it an eight on elite um, which I am happy that they upped the level uh, simply because it kind of made no sense that, you know, part one, okay, that one was level five, no problem. Part two is level seven, and then part three is a level less. So, I, I am glad that they, uh, they did change that there. Alright. So, once you first get in, it is fairly empty, right up until the door on your left. Once you go through... Um, it does show a little chest there, which is actually fairly hard to get to if you don't have a good jump and a speed. But the way to get up and over there, uh, there actually are two ways. So see the door behind the chest there, we can actually come back later and go to that chest. Or you can actually hop up and around. Now, personally, I choose to usually hop up and around because I do have the jump and the, the, the speed required, as well as feather fall. That is definitely a must. Alright, so the chest itself isn't actually locked, which is a good thing considering the the effort it might take you to get up top so as you see at the bottom there was a couple of spawns here there's one there there's also one in the corner here so just be aware that if you are trying to you know hop up there to just make sure that you kill them and then as you can see you can come back up and around and try again now I do want to point out that though the first time I jumped I was able to grab the ledge don't rely on that as at times it is fairly hard to grab that ledge all right so continuing through you just want to head north now as soon as you open up this lever um, it's gonna start breaking these uh, the sarcophagus and it's gonna spawn in a whole bunch of wraiths now we actually got also a famine reaper in here as well do kind of want to target him. There we go. Uh, with the breaking sarcophagus, you do got to be quick. Um, we were only able to get two of them. Any ones that break with before you shoot them, you don't actually get count for. So, you know, the faster you are, the more you can get, the easier it's going to be to get the, the total ransack bonus there. Alright, so in here there is a kind of a little spiral ramp leading up to the door. The door is rune locked. Uh, as you see right above there, there's that little rune. To unlock that, you just head up the ladder and head on into this room. Now, as soon as you approach, there is going to be a spawn right off the hop. As well, there's also going to be a wraith inside here. Now, the wraith will spawn in as soon as you approach the lantern, not when you touch the lantern, uh, the, the soul lock there. Um, if you are going to go for ransack, it is recommended to break the sarcophagi first, as when you pull the soul lock and open up the soul lock here 
it will break a good majority of them as it spawns in skeletons. In this situation, it does also lock you in, and you cannot progress until you kill them. So once we've killed them, here's our eye lever here. It's just down to the south on, on the left wall or the eastern wall. And if we continue heading south, it does just have a shrine here for us right there. <clears throat> All right. So now that we've done that, we want to head west and out of the room and we can proceed up the ramp and out. Now to the next room. We've got a drop here and we can actually head around the side. So where we need to go is actually down into the room itself. And again, turret here as the Solok Guardian spawns in. Quickly grab our breakables. Let's actually toss a turret down over there. See, they're already hitting it even though they haven't actually spawned in. I just love that. Now this time, uh, as you're fighting them, when you kill the one that goes with the... Uh, that sarcophagus, it actually lights the rune up behind them. As you'll see, that one just lit up there. Here's a good example. Once we kill. And then once all of them are lit up, our door opens back up. Now, if you are a, con a purveyor of collectibles, there is one right behind the stairs. So you can grab that before you start heading up. And then you just want to head west. to our third room. Now if you look on the map, this is actually the, the room that we would need to do if you weren't able to make that jump at the start of the quest. So before actually hopping down, as you can actually make your way back up, or rather it is difficult um, with the, the stairs being broken there. No more enemies. Alright. So here we are. We can use the lever to open up the gate. And then we can actually pick this door. So you can actually pick it when you're on the other side. Um, but as you can see, you got to use the lever in order to continue. So you can't use that as a, like a cheat to get uh, right from the beginning all the way halfway through. Uh, so you can't, uh, sneak past, plus that, and you need to go back, and you do need to open up all five of the, the soul locks there. Okay. 
So once again, soul lock, and it spawns in enemies. Once they are all dead, it does open up both of these paths. Now the path on the right here where the shrines are, uh, just inside we do have another lever that we do need to pull in order to continue on. So that rune there actually opens up the door at that at the end of that hall there. Uh, as well, when we approach that door, it is going to spawn in a few more enemies. So just be aware of that. All right. So now we're on to the fourth soul locks. So we're gonna continue heading down. Now this room is quite a bit bigger. Um, and there's two levels to it, so we can actually fight on the bottom as well as the top. Now what I like to do in here, when I'm not lagging, is first get all the breakables. And I like to do so from a distance. Ouch. The reason I like to do so from a distance is the same reason that the the, uh, the Reaper had spawned in, sorry gotta sneeze there, is as you approach these the sides here, it will actually spawn in enemies. So even though we're getting the breakables here, they still will spawn in, even though they haven't spawned in already. I'm just doing so as far away from center as possible here. Doesn't seem I can get those, so I'll just shoot them. So then once I'm done that, there are still a couple left, but it's not too bad. I will actually run through, spawning them, and then I'll drop a turret. But again, I don't recommend spawning everything at once like I am, as that can be fairly hazardous. Obviously, the more enemies, the uh, more difficult it will be. So just move at your own pace there, whatever you feel comfortable moving at. And again, this is completely unnecessary. Honestly, even like getting the breakables, that is something that a lot of people don't generally do. Um, but I like to get as much experience out of these quests as possible, as again, it is a fairly nice amount of experience. But it does take a little bit of work, as you do need to have range damage in order to break the sarcophagi. Otherwise, uh, if you run past them without doing that, uh, the sarcophagi are going to break and it just won't give you count for it. Which I kind of don't think is fair because, I mean, they're breaking. 
there's nothing left to break. Everything has been broken, whether by you or by an enemy. So I feel it should still count, but of course, not my call. All right, and again, as we approach, spawns in our lovely soul lock guardian. When we pull our thing, it spawns in a few more. Alright. Once you've done that, uh, the easy way is to hop down and then head up the, the stairs again. And just proceed around the edge. To our open door on the uh, west. To the south there, as you see this door, uh, there is a shrine behind here, so if you do need a, a respite, there is a, a nice little one there. So if you've been breaking everything by this point, uh, you should be pretty close uh, to your ransack already. Um, sometimes, uh, depending on how much you break versus how many the quest breaks, you might be able to have it before you actually get to the last room. Um, but again, that also depends on how many you're able to break at the start. Uh, we were only able to grab two of them, so we weren't actually able to get our full ransack before entering the end room. But not to be worried, there's a lot in here as well. Now, these two pillars here uh, that had the sarcophagi around them, again, if you don't break them before you approach, um, from the little pillars there where the stairs are going to be, just there, they are going to shoot some arrow traps which will start breaking the sarcophagi, again, not giving you count. As well, it also spawns in, as you see, a couple of enemies. Uh, there are a few more enemies here we didn't spawn in, which we can get by just running around the side edge here. And once that's done, again, this same thing on that side, I am going to skip them just because we do have Conquest and Ransack already. And you get the picture, you walk next to him, it breaks. Nothing spectacular there. All right, so this last one here, um, nothing actually spawns when you approach the Soul Lock. Uh, as well, there are some more down here that you can break, but because we have Ransack, I'm not gonna worry about it again. And right about here, um, it's going to actually spawn in our end enemy, uh, which is, again, Delira. So we're just going to use the soul lock and spawn it. It spawns in a whole bunch of other enemies as well, as you can see. However, once Delira dies and you defeat them, um, it instantly kills the rest of them. So if you are still shy on getting enough kills to have conquest sorry my brain kind of stopped working there um, if you have enough kills to already have conquest I would just say focus on Delira um, if you're not too sure your skill you can obviously take out the trash kind of running around in circles and if you are skilled enough uh, you can actually and have the like uh, the jump and such you can actually get up here um, it is a difficult jump to make though, and obviously that would trap them all back down there still, allowing you to shoot them from up top here safely. Uh, once you're done to the northeastern corner, there is an open door as well as a ghost of Delira. Now you can talk to her now, uh, however it doesn't actually do anything yet. 
um, that is actually used to proceed to the fourth quest. Uh, but in here you've got a chest. And we got one of the named loots. Yeah, mythic one, not too shabby. I'll grab that. And then you can actually just step right on out the door. Once you've done that, you've completed part three Delirious. So we're going to pick up in part four. The way to pick up part four is a little tricky, so I'm just going to get to that at the beginning of the next video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one, all.